Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC3 at QuickSurf Internet Studios. Linux Newslog is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I would like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you haven't already done so. For those of you who have, thank you so much for subscribing. And with that, let's go ahead and get into the stories for this episode. Starting off over at digitalspy.com. For those of you who uh, are pretty serious gamers or or game players, uh, video game players, Civilization Beyond Earth Launch window has been revealed for Mac OS X and Linux. The most important one, at least for this particular show, is Linux. The turn-based strategy title will make its way to Mac and Linux platforms by the end of the year, according to the company. The teams from uh, FireAxis and 2K have done an astounding job of expanding on the core Civ experience in Beyond Earth, Aspire Media Executive Elizabeth Howard has said on the firm's website. So it's exciting for us to be able to bring the same experience to Mac and Linux users everywhere. So this is pretty cool. I'm actually a huge fan of Civilization. Uh, Back when I was young and had lots of time, I actually played Civilization quite a bit. Uh, But uh, still pretty cool nonetheless. From uh, Barons.com, Alibaba lands Chinese smartphone maker Mizu for its Yun OS Android competitor. Now, there's quite a bit going on here with this. Uh, Though Google's Android operating system continues to rack up gains in the world of mobile devices, there will always be other possibilities, such as Samsung Electronics' Tizen operating system. Another competitor to Android is UnOS, the mobile operating system developed by e-commerce giant Alibaba Group Holding. According to a report uh, by Michael Cannon in IT News, Alibaba has landed at least one supporter for Yun OS, Miezo, a relatively small Chinese maker of smartphones. Um, he is citing an announcement made by Miezo today. They have traditionally placed their own skin or user interface on top of Android, known or Android, known as Fly Me. Um, Pretty interesting. Uh, Yun OS is based on Linux, so it's kind of Android-ish and kind of Tizen-ish, but at the same time, not really. And it has less than 1% market share. So it's outside of China, probably, you know, this is the first I've ever heard of it uh, when I ran across the story. So pretty interesting. From <clears throat> Network World, Ubuntu turns 10. Ubuntu is one of my favorite distributions. A look back at the desktop Linux standard bearer. It's pronounced Ubuntu. I always say Ubuntu, even though technically that's incorrect. So pretty interesting. It's basically, uh, this article is basically a slideshow of 10 slides. It covers, you know, all the cool stuff. So definitely uh, check it out. From linuxgizmos.com, Stick Computer runs Android on a quad-core Atom processor. That's right. Shenzhen Apic Electronics has launched a $110 Android Stick Computer built around a quad-core Intel Atom Z3735 system on a chip with 1 to 2 gigs of RAM and 16 to 32 gigabytes of storage. The market is awash in $100 HDMI dongle devices that run Android on ARM Cortex processors. Now Intel's Atom is getting the same treatment, although at a higher price. The Chinese manufacturer called Shenzhen Apic Electronics has launched an Atom-based MigoPad Migo T01 stick computer, also referred to as the APM D01. You can buy it over at AliExpress and Alibaba starting at $110. So pretty cool. Um, You know, the Atom processor is kind of Intel's low-end entry. The nice thing about it is it does tend to be x86. For those of you who recognize in the background here, right around here on the video, there's actually, right there, a minnow board, uh, 
which is Atom Intel Atom based, and I've got a couple of different projects that actually use that here around the house, and it runs Linux, and uh, you know it's one of those low end. Just I just need a board to run some stuff type things. So pretty cool. From ADTMag.com, Linux rift over system D widens with the threat of a Debian fork. Anonymous Unix administrators have threatened to fork the popular Debian distribution of Linux and go their own way on further development unless granted their wish to have the open source project proceed without requiring System D, a component so controversial it has led to death threats against its main contributor. Now, we've talked a little bit about uh, System D in the past and um, the... Uh, here, the main contributor, what's his name? I don't even remember his name. This is how important this is to me. Uh, but anyway, um, you know, frankly, you know, anytime there's change, people are going to get upset. That's just the reality of the matter. And, and System D may not be everybody's cup of tea, but that doesn't necessarily mean that whatever those people want is anybody else's cup of tea. You know, we've, I've talked about this at length before, you know, you should use what works for you. So, you know, if system D doesn't work for you, don't use it. It's really quite simple. Um, uh, you know, personally, I'm not a huge fan of it, but you know, to each his own. So anyway, uh, pretty interesting from uh, the var guy.com. Microsoft promises Docker open source app virtualization on Windows. This is pretty neat. Open source developers can be sure the software they're writing is a hit when even Microsoft wants a piece of the action. Boy, isn't that the case? Microsoft doesn't get into things unless they really want in. Uh, that's exactly what happened with Docker, the containerized virtualization platform for running cloud apps which will now be supported in Windows Server and the Azure Cloud. Pretty interesting. Because Docker depends on containerization features deeply embedded in the Linux kernel, code to implement lightweight virtual machines, porting it to Windows is not an obvious proposition. But a few days ago, Microsoft said it will work with the open source community to advance development of tools that already exist for bringing Docker support to Windows. It also promised to implement the Docker orchestration API on Azure. So pretty interesting. If you want to be able to run that sort of thing on a Microsoft supplied uh, platform, uh, it's about to get a whole lot easier from what it's looking like. From betanews.com, Linux distro Ubuntu 15.04 gets its name Vivid Vervet. Vervet? Vivid Vervet? Not quite sure how to uh, pronounce that. Ubuntu has become one of the most popular and influential distributions of all time. It's my favorite distribution. It is easy to use, well designed, and has a large and helpful community. Despite its general greatness, it uses a rather silly naming convention based on sequential letters. That letter is used in the start of two consecutive words, the first being an adjective and the second being an animal. Is it fun? I suppose. Actually, it isn't too different than Android, which also uses sequential letters, but for yummy sweets. Today, Mark Shuttleworth, Canonical CEO, announced the latest name for the upcoming 15.04 release. The letter V is being used, the adjective vivid, the animal vervet. Yes, the next version of Ubuntu is vivid vervet, but what is a vervet? I don't know. They have a picture here. It looks like some kind of monkey. Uh, so definitely uh, check out the story if you want to find out what a vervet is. I'm not going to read the whole thing because we do actually, the whole point of this show is to uh, push traffic to new suppliers. So uh, at any rate, that will do it for this edition of Linux News Log. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes which you can find online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. See you then.